All right, welcome back, philosophers. We are going to get into um, a little different kind of logic today. We're talking about categorical syllogism so far, right? And and those were, you know, all A is B, some A is B. Those were those kinds of statements when we're making propositions like that, right? Um, today we're going to talk about um, propositional logic, and that is when you do logic at the proposition level. What you what you kind of do is. You, you start off with your propositions and then you can connect them in different ways and uh, you can get new propositions, which is kind of weird about language. So for example, one that we're not going to learn today, but it's an easy one to teach is uh, and. So if I had a proposition, let's say um, I sit in the chair and I have another proposition, the chair is blue. I could put an and in between those and I can say I sit in the chair and the chair is blue and now I have a new proposition that's sort of what uh, propositional calculus or propositional logic is interested in those kinds those kinds of uh, things connecting propositions with connectives um, so the first one we're going to talk about though is a hypothetical now a hypothetical of course I mean you're probably thinking like you know um, <clears throat> a hypothetical situation like what if this would happen that's not quite what we mean we mean if then statements and um, even then when I say if then I don't mean um, every single if then because sometimes we use the words if then and we don't mean exactly um, exactly what what uh, the logicians are talking about but that's a little too complicated maybe we'll talk about it some other time um, when I s you see the the p arrow q, we'll define that as meaning if p then q. So p is a is a proposition and q is a proposition, and we add if then and then we get a new proposition. So for example, if I say um, if you go to uh, school, then you will uh, drink from the fountain of knowledge. Right. So those are two different propositions. You go to school, you drink from the fountain of knowledge. Right, and if then connects them. If you go to school, then you drink from the fountain of knowledge. And what's cool about language is that you can actually keep throwing more and more connectives. So I said one of them is and, right? If you go to school, then you will go, uh, drink from the fountain of knowledge. And I am sitting in a chair, and it is blue, right? All of that I could I could keep adding stuff, right? If I wanted to. Um, but in any case, let's talk about this if p then q it's, itself. How do I get uh, something out of that, right? Because wh what we want to do with logic is we don't want to just look at some statements. What we want to do is, is learn some stuff that we didn't know before. So let's say um, I say if P then Q. What I mean is if you are inside a P, you, then you are inside a Q. Or at least this is a good way to, die, to, to show kind of what it means. But now, um, if you're inside a P, then you're inside a Q. So let's say you're inside a P, right? If P then Q, and we know that P well, what can you conclude from that? You can conclude that you are also inside a Q, so therefore Q, all right? And uh, an example I'll give you is um, if you have Coke with Pop Rocks, then your stomach will explode, right? So if you have Coke with Pop Rocks, then your stomach will explode. Let's say you had Coke with Pop Rocks, therefore your stomach will explode or exploded. This was like a rumor when I was a kid that everybody would say. Um, you probably don't even know what Pop Rocks are. That's okay. Um, they are pretty great, though. Uh, all right, the next thing, <clears throat> modus tones. Another, so we can get, we can do this. If P then Q, P therefore Q. Um, and think about it. Is there any other way to get, well, there is. But let's try to try to think, what, what other way could I get a conclusion out of this? If P then Q. Um, well, think about it this way. If I'm, what I've said here by the if P then Q is that if you are in P, then for sure you're going to be in Q. Does that mean if you are not in P that you won't be in Q? Well, no, obviously, you know, you don't know how big Q is. By this statement, I should say, you don't know how big this the Q is. So um, doesn't necessarily mean you won't be in Q. But if you're not in Q, if you're outside of Q, are you outside of P? Well, yeah, definitely. Because we said if you're in P, you were going to be in Q, right? So if you're not in Q, then it must be the case that you weren't in P. This little guy right here, this tilde, we're gonna, that means not. All right, so the arrow means if then, the tilde means not. So if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P, therefore you're not P. By the way, um, there are other ways to symbolize these things, right? Um, a lot of times people will write if P then Q like this, like the, or the, the arrow instead, they'll do it like this. And a lot of times the, that little tilde, 
they'll do the not sign like that instead. It's just different ways to do it. Um, so if you have coke with pop rocks and your stomach will explode, let's say your stomach did not explode, right? You're outside here. You're not in the stomach exposed thing. Therefore, you do not have coke with pop rocks. Therefore, you're not in this one. All right. But what about this? If you have coke with pop rocks, then your stomach will explode. Your stomach exploded. Therefore, you had coke with pop rocks. Does that make sense? Well, think about it. Um, if you have coke with pop rocks, right, then your stomach will explode. We see if you're in here, then you're in here. Your stomach exploded. Does that mean that your stomach exploded from coke and pop rocks? Not necessarily, right? Maybe you swallowed a grenade. Uh, I don't know. There's the swelling grenade box. Uh, I don't know. Um, how else your stomach would explode? That, there's not too many ways, I guess. Um, so what I'll do is I'll switch stomach will explode or stomach exploded, right? I'll switch that with you consume sugar. If you have coke with pop rocks, then you consume sugar. You consumed sugar, therefore you had coke with pop rocks. Now clearly there's different, more than one way to consume sugar. The, way that, the reason that this seemed so convincing was because you couldn't think of very many ways to, for your stomach to explode. Whereas here, you can think of tons of ways to consume sugar. Uh, so uh, what you can't do then in, in um, hypothetical syllogisms is you can't affirm the consequent. I should actually have it written out here, but let's, let's do it real quick. So if P then Q, right? Uh, this first one right here, oh, I'm sorry, we're doing arrows, huh? Uh, there's no back. I need, to, I need to get a better system here. If P, then Q. This first one here, this P, is uh, called the antecedent, all right? It antecedes, you know, the, the second one. So um, a good way to, to, to remember this is uh, if you think about, like, uh, when people play poker, right, they ante up, right? They put the ante in. That's the ante is what you do, bef you, you, the, the chips you put in before you actually start playing, right? Um, or maybe antebellum you may have heard of, right? That's before the war. Um, so an uh, antecedent is the one that comes first. And then Q is the consequence, right? It's like the consequence of P, right? So it comes second. What you can't do if you say if P then Q, you can't affirm, say yes to the consequence. You can't say Q and then get anything out of it, right? If P then Q, Q, you can't say therefore P. Why? Because maybe this is also true. If R then Q, right? Right. Maybe uh, if you uh, swallow uh, a grenade, your stomach can explode. And if you eat coke with pop rocks, your stomach will explode. Right. Either one of those could be the case. So um, if you know that your stomach exploded, it doesn't mean that necessarily it was coke with pop rocks. How about this one, though? If you have coke with pop rocks, then your stomach will explode. You did not have coke and pop rocks, therefore your stomach did not explode. All right, again, think about it this way. If you have coke with pop rocks, right, then your stomach explodes. But you didn't have coke with pop rocks. Does that mean your stomach didn't explode? Well, again, not necessarily. Let's switch those stomach will explode again with consume sugar. If you have coke with pop rocks, then you consume sugar. You did not have coke and pop rocks, therefore you did not consume sugar. No, obviously you could have eaten um, cookies or any kind of delightful treats. So, um, yeah, so that is a, a fallacious way to argue. And, and um, rule number two, denying the antecedent. You can't uh, have if P then Q, you can't deny P and then get anything out of it, right? So, and again, for the same reason, if P then Q, right? But it might also be the case that if R then Q, Right. So, in other words, P is what's called, in, in this situation, P is what's called a sufficient condition, right? If you have P, that's sufficient for bringing about Q. But it's not necessarily a necessary condition, right? It might not be the case that you need P to get Q. You might also have R and get Q. R might be a sufficient condition for Q. And if that's the case, then saying you don't have P doesn't mean that you won't get Q, right? You might have R. So denying the antecedent. Let's do a little bit of practice. Um, let me pull up my practice. Where are you? All right, should be coming up any minute now. There you are. All right, well, so what we'll do is, uh, again, like last time, Symbolize these, um, tell if they're valid or invalid. If they are invalid, tell what fallacy they committed. 
uh, do one, pause the video, uh, see if you can do it, and then uh, unpause it, see what the answer was, and then just keep going like that. The first one, if she walks, then she moves. She moves, therefore she walks. So let's see here. I'm going to say, if W, and this is lowercase w, right? If W, then M. M, therefore W. And is that valid or invalid? That is invalid. All right, that is rule number, I don't remember which rules are which. Uh, let's see. Rule number two, no, rule number one, affirming the consequent. And by the way, uh, they're not really usually referred to as rule number one or two. I just have that on there just to make it easy. So rule number one, affirming the antecedent. Uh, affirming the consequent. Gosh, I'm messing this up. Sorry, guys. Affirming the consequent. You can't um, say from if W then M. You can't say, well, I have M, therefore I must have W. Because remember, W is just a sufficient cause for M. It's not a necessary cause. You don't need W. You don't necessarily, you might not necessarily need W for M. You might be able to get M some other way. So this is invalid. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to write invalid, though. Um, if she walks, then she moves. If W, then M. She walks, W, therefore she moves. Valid or invalid? That is valid, right? This is called modus ponens. Um, next one. She walks and she moves. She does not move, therefore she does not walk. If W, then M. She does not move. Not the case that M. Therefore, it's not the case that she walks. Valid or invalid? That is valid, right? You're saying by this, this top one, if you have W, then you're going to have M. Right, you have to. If you have W, you have to have M. But it, so that means if you don't have M, you must not have had W. Because if you did have that W, you would have had M. Right. Next one. If she walks, then she moves. She does not walk, therefore she does not move. Valid or invalid? That is invalid. That is uh, denying the antecedent. Right. Um, if W, then M. That doesn't mean W is the only way to get to M necessarily, right? So you can't say, well, we don't have W, therefore we don't have M. If there's a lamp in the living room, somebody turned it on. If, let's say, oh gosh, I hate it when it does that. If there's a lamp in the living room, that somebody turned on in the living room, then somebody turned it on. So let's say, if, oh, I forgot, sorry, lowercase. If L then somebody turned it on. The lamp is not on. Gosh, stop doing that. Lamp is not on in the living room. Therefore, it's not the case that somebody turned it on. Valid or invalid? This is invalid. It's denying the antecedent. And uh, you may wonder though, I'm looking at this, how is it possible, right? If there is a lamp on, then somebody turned it on. Um, if the lamp is not on, then nobody turned it on. It sounds like it makes sense, right? Um, uh, yeah, but by the by the by the uh, by what the the first proposition says, it just says if there's a lamp on, then somebody turn it on. It doesn't say what happens if the lamp isn't on, right? So uh, we're not as worried about that. And I mean, you might think of some other ways. Um, somebody may have uh, turned it on, but uh, I don't know. The light bulb was out. I'm not sure. Um, if you come at five o'clock, I won't be ready. So, if you come at five, F, then I won't be ready, R. I'm not ready, R. Therefore, you must have come at five o'clock, F. Valid or invalid? That is invalid. This way, by the way, um, is, uh, uh, the way I wrote it here, this is, uh, affirming the consequent but the one you could actually do it this way you could say if five o'clock then I'm well will not be ready not R not R therefore uh, five o'clock now when you look at it it's actually the exact same thing uh, in both of these cases right I have an R is my consequent here and I've affirmed it here not R is my consequent here, and I've affirmed it here. So notice the not signs right there. Oh, shoot, we've been doing tildes, huh? Dang, sorry, guys. Um, okay. So uh, it, it's, I think in like the more advanced logics, it seems like. I, maybe I'm wrong on that, but 
it seems like they always use these little corners, so I apologize. So, um, but in, in any case, notice so the not becomes part of the consequence. What you have is, remember, something like this. Gosh, I, again, I used the wrong symbol. If P then Q, P is a proposition, and it could be, right, it could, it could be, you know, uh, one little proposition, it could be two, it could be something like this, P and R, then Q, right? This whole thing is an antecedent, this whole thing is a consequent. So either way, it's going to be the same, you're going to get the same answer. I will buy a chocolate bar only if you pay. You paid, so I bought the chocolate bar. Think about this one. What do you think? Uh, how is this first one going to look? Because the first one doesn't say if then. If you buy a chocolate bar, then you will. If I buy a chocolate bar, then you will pay. So um, doesn't it's not in that format. Uh, but you do see the only if part right here. So let's think. What is this saying? Well, it, is it saying that um, if you pay, I'm for sure going to buy a chocolate bar? No, it's not really saying that, right? It's saying the only way I'm going to buy a chocolate bar is if you pay, right? So again, so what this is going to... Oh, let me do that. So if we have our little arrow here, if uh, if I bought a chocolate bar, then you paid. That's sort of what it's saying. You paid, therefore, I bought a chocolate bar, and this is invalid. This is affirming the consequence. I will not go swimming unless... Oh, so I'm sorry. Let's go back and let's look at this. So only if, if you see P only if... Q, that is a key to saying if P, then Q, all right? So I would definitely write that down and keep that at the ready because sometimes you're going to see that and, and it's going to be a little tricky. The next one, I will not go swimming unless a lifeguard is on duty. I didn't go swimming, thus you can, you can um, conclude that there wasn't a lifeguard on duty. Um, sorry. Oh, Max Scherzer, no hit last night. That's right. So, I will not go swimming unless a lifeguard is on duty. Let's think about what are we saying? Are we going to say, are we saying that if there's a lifeguard on duty, then I'm going to go swimming? No, not really, right? I didn't say that. What I said was, that's the only way I'm going to go swimming is if there's a lifeguard. I'm not saying that I for sure will, right? So, um, if I went swimming, then there was a lifeguard on duty, right? Or alternatively, that you could say something like this. If it's not, oh, sorry, tildes, tildes. Uh, if it's not the case that the lifeguard is on duty, then it's not the case that I will go swimming. And it's in a second here, I'm going to show you why these are actually equal. These two things are equal. So if S, then L, right? I didn't go swimming. Oh, gosh, I'm used to using those other ones. But um, if not S, therefore not L. This is denying the antecedent so this is invalid right there might be more than one way to get to l um looking at the the other way that we could have done it this way over here if not l then not s i could say i didn't go swimming right not s therefore there wasn't a lifeguard right not l now think about that what what happened here i have a bunch of knots so it might it might look a little tricky but Remember, this is the antecedent, this is the consequent, right? In fact, let's see, maybe we'll change colors here for you. Get all fancy. Oh, I didn't change colors. All right, so this is the consequent, that whole thing. This is the consequent, right, not S. So this affirms the consequence. It says th yes to not S, right? And then I'm, I'm just going to go and, oh, that's not even the same color. Boo. Is this right? This is right, right? Yeah, there we go. Um, so you can't affirm the the consequent. And notice this is um, a absolute. This is actually the uh, this stuff right here is actually the opposite rule uh, from this one over here. On this rule on the left, right, we uh, denied the antecedent. Over here, we affirmed the consequent. I may have said that wrong last time. I apologize if it did. These words just so crazy. All right, but now let's look at uh, let's look at uh, why these two things are equivalent. Um, why are they equivalent? Well, think about it this way. Let me, let me get a little box right here. If I say if s then l, and I say um, I don't have l, 
that I can conclude, I know from my rules, I conclude that I don't have S, right? So, looking at these two things right here, right? If S then L, then if I don't have L, I won't have S, right? Which is the same thing as saying, if I don't have L, then I won't have S, right? So as long as you have this one up here, you will have this one down here, right? If you don't have L, you won't have S. That's why these two things are, con are, are equivalent. Because if you say if S then L, that's the same thing uh, that's saying that if you didn't have L, then you wouldn't have S, which is this right here. That's why these two things are equivalent. Another thing to notice is, um, let's change colors again, this word unless. What does unless mean? Well, unless can be translated um, in one of two ways, right? I will not go swimming unless a lifeguard is duty, on duty. Uh, I could say, if I went swimming, I went, uh, then the lifeguard's on duty. So uh, you see, and of course you see this little like knot right here, right? So, um, uh, but I didn't say not S, right? So it's kind of like what you're given is like uh, a not, if not swimming, uh, not swimming unless L, right? Not S unless L. Sorry, this is, need more space. Not S unless L. If you get something like that, that means that if S, then L, right? Again, I would write that down. If you see not S unless L, that means if S, then L. <coughs> Excuse me? The library is open, and I told you I would study only if the library is open, so it looks like I am going to study. If L, wait, the library is open. No, 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 that's not an if then statement. Um, the library is open is a statement, though. L, library is open. And I told you I would study S only if the library is open. Only if L. Now, do you remember up here what we said only if means, I think it's somewhere up here. Yeah, here it is, right here. P only if Q means if P then Q. So, S only if L is the same as saying if S then L. If I'm studying, then the library is open. The library is open, therefore I'm studying. Right? Obviously, this is affirming the consequent. This is invalid. And it may look a little tricky at first, but remember what you're saying is not that you will study if the library is open, that just the only way you're going to study is if the library is open. And if somebody says, hey, the library is open, that doesn't mean you have to go study, right? He didn't say that. If my dog continues to eat two treats a, di a day in addition to his food, then he will gain too much weight. All right, so if, uh, let's see, eat, then too much weight. If he gains too much weight, W, then it's unhealthy for him, U. So if he eats two treats a day in addition to his food, then it will be unhealthy for him, for you. Now that doesn't look anything like what we've seen so far. Is it valid or invalid? Well, let's see. Let's say you have if E then W, right? Or that, that's what we said was true. Let's assume that you have E, right? So we're going to assume E. If you have E, if E then W, assume E, let's even say right over here, say provisionally assume, PA, provisionally assume the E. Let's, let's say for the sake of argument, a E. Then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to get W, right? therefore W. And now uh, let's, uh, we also said if W, then U is true, right? You have W right here, where is it? Yeah, right here, and you have if W, then U, so then you have U, right? So if you have E, right, you have, we already said we have this, if E, then W, and if W, then U, so if you have E, then you will have u, right? So if you have e, then you will have u, and that's the same as this right here. So this is a valid way to argue. Uh, it's not, we don't call it modus ponens or bonus tollens or anything like that. Um, it's, it's um, well, I guess these terms are getting too big, so let's just forget about the terms. But yeah, just know like you can do that with the if-thens, and that's it for this practice. Adios.